Hi everybody, and thanks for stopping by. Let's pause here for a second. I'm going to be doing some work on the electrical system of this smoker. If you're not comfortable doing this, don't attempt it. If your skill set doesn't allow this, don't attempt it. Find someone qualified to do this. So the other day I was going to be using my charboil electric smoker uh, to do a cook. And when I plugged it in, the GFI breaker that it was plugging into tripped. Thought it was a bad breaker or a bad outlet. Plugged it into another one. Same thing, it tripped. Okay. Um, started doing a little investigating and realized that there can be issues after a certain amount of time with the heating element uh, that can cause uh, it to trip breakers when you plug it in. There's some sort of short circuit and I use my smokers a lot. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this heating element and see if we need to replace it. To inspect the heating element, I need to remove the cover that conceals that. It also um, supports the wood box in here, the wood container. And it looks like there are four screws that need to be removed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those and get that out of there so we can take a look at the heating element. Okay, so you have the support leg under here. There's a screw in the bottom of that, but that would be virtually impossible to get out. But there's a screw in the top here which connects the cover to the support. So this is the one to take out. There we got that little screw out of there. Also remember, when you're doing this, before you start, don't plug it in. It should be unplugged. Common sense. This one appears a little bent. have to get a different screwdriver and try and get this. Okay, so it's finally able to get these loosened up so that I can remove them. Couldn't get the camera in a position to get a good view while I was doing that because my body was contorted inside this, but they are turning now. Still a very awkward angle, but they're coming out. So there's this little spacer in here. Okay, so we've exposed the heating element. And inside, I don't see any big issues. I don't see any breaks in it. The underside looks good. All right, time to move to the back panel. Okay, so you have this back panel here which is where the connections for the heating element are um, in the body. Um, if you're not comfortable doing this, don't mess with it. You know, find someone who can repair it, who knows what they're doing, or call Charbroil. Um, you know, you don't need to mess around with electrical stuff. I've done this before in other smokers, so I'm comfortable doing this. And if something looks totally, totally bad that I'm not comfortable with, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll get someone to do it. Um, uh, that knows what they're doing, or I'll get a new smoker. Okay, so we've got this little gasket that helps cover it. Looks like rubberized. And I want to check these connections here. Gotta be honest, these connections look fine. I don't even want to take anything off. There's no charring anything in here. So I think my next place to look is down here in the electrical connection box where the cord goes in. So let's get this puppy turned on its side. Okay, so I've got the smoker on its side. This is the box we're gonna take a look at with the cord connection. I'm gonna clean off some of these cobwebs, but also just go ahead and remove the grease tray set that aside give you more room to work my smoker is stored in the garage usually they're not in use but you know it's going to get something's crawling around things 
Okay, there are a number of screws which connect the flange of this cover to the smoker body. Okay, we're going to start removing screws now. Once again, reminding you, do not have this plugged in if you're attempting this. And if you're not comfortable, don't attempt this. Okay, so I have the box opened up. And I can tell you right away, nothing looks wrong here. There's no charring. If you've had electric smokers before that you've used for a long time, you'll eventually see charring on some of the wiring where this, the heat eventually gets through. This looks fine. The ground looks fine. Every, every connection in here looks fine. So now I'm back to that heating element. And I'm starting to think that maybe there's something internally wrong inside the tubing of the heating element. Maybe there's been a short circuit or something. So I'm going to take a closer look at that now after I put this back on. Okay, so I want to take another look at these connections here. So let's, let's remove let's slide these connections off. So both of the connections look pretty good. And then if you can see it back here on this side, the ground connection looks fine. I'm not seeing any charring, anything on this. The cord itself, I've inspected several times, the cord itself seems fine. I know it's not the outlets. I've run it on multiple GFI outlets and the same outlets can run a, a compressor's fine, power tool's fine. Uh, this is only supposed to draw 750 watts, um, you know, which is what? Seven, under seven amps on a 120 circuit. So it shouldn't be tripping, and that's not even what the purpose of GFI is, it's not an overload. So the GFIs shouldn't be the problem. Alright, I'm going to hook everything back up and plug it in again, see what's going on, if, it, if it's working. If maybe I moved something that's working right, or I don't know, otherwise it's got to be something further along. I can't imagine it's in the control panel, that should be on the low voltage side of this. Um, we'll see. Let's get it back together. All right, I have the heating element cover reinstalled. I'm gonna put the rest of the pieces in, fire it up, test, and see what we get. Okay, let's power this up, see if it works. Okay, I've powered the control panel. Go figure. Set the temp. 225. Set the time. Two hours. Okay. So far it's going. Strange. Okay, about two minutes in. Looks like it tripped again. Okay, so it definitely tripped. Let me reset. Immediately trips again. Let's take this out. immediately trips again. Okay, and I know it's not this cord because I've gone directly into this outlet and other outlets without an extension. Hmm, a little stumped here. Okay, I'm back with the Charbroil electric smoker. It's been several weeks since I began to film this video of my diagnosing and fixing of this unit. Uh, in the interim, I've contacted Charbroil since I was stumped by what was causing this. First, they sent me a new power cord, and I changed that out, and the same thing happened. Contacted them back again, and they've now sent me out a new heating element and a new thermostat. So I'm about to swap those out and see if that fixes this problem. So now I need to go back through the process of removing this cover that shrouds the heating element. The thermostat, I believe, is right up in here, so I'll be removing this from the back side. There's a panel, and I'll also be going on the back side to do the connections for the new heating element. Now I have to remove this panel again, which I previously removed to check the connections. I'm 
remove the connectors from the back side of the heating element. Remove this, this off here. I need to remove these nuts in here which secure the heating element. There's also a ground wire connection on this side, so we have to make sure that we reconnect that. One more nut, and I can always already see the heating element start to slip away in there. Second nut, so I'm gonna go to the other side, remove it, and slide the other one through. Get this one out here. Slides out just like that. And the new heating element. We're just gonna feed it carefully through. secure it on the other side. Okay, so we got one washer on, one nut, second washer on, second nut, tighten these down, and then we'll get the ground reconnected. I have the nuts on that secure the heating element, and I'm now going to put the ground wire back on with the supplied lock washer and nut. They send an entirely new set of connectors. Nuts, bolts, everything with this replacement. Okay, now it's time to fit the rubber gasket over and reconnect the power leads. Good. Now on to the panel for the replacement thermostat, and they sent a new panel also. So there's the little inset where the thermostat lives. We need to remove the power leads and the bolts to replace it. You can hear our neighbor dog Wyatt barking. He's funny. Okay, what you can't see here is my wife on the other side of the smoker holding the bolt so that it doesn't fall out. It's a little Phillips head screw bolt, whatever you want to call it. Taking out the second one here. Okay, let's take the old thermostat out. Okay, I'm going to put the new thermostat in now. Let me just pre-thread the nuts here. I always confuse it. I say nuts when I mean, or I say bolts when I mean nuts, and nuts when I mean bolts. It's a pretty confined spot here, so if you have a helper, it's a good thing. Okay, I'm going to start tightening now. Thermostat. So we just need to reconnect the power leads. This one, top one, was a little tricky. Just want to use my needle nose. There we go. That's reconnected. Now, let's put it back together. That's all done. Let's get it ready for our test. So there is the newly installed heating element. I just need to get the cover reinstalled on that, and we'll be ready to test. The heating element cover is reinstalled, and I'm going to go ahead and reinstall everything, all the trays and everything, because I'm going to be optimistic that this is going to work and I'm not going to have to take it apart again. <laughs> Once again, being hopeful, everything's reinstalled on the inside. I'm going to get it plugged in now and we'll see what happens. So here goes the test. Uh, previously it would power up, but after about two minutes it would stop. So let's see what happens. Okay, we have power to the control panel. I'm going to set the temperature at 225. I'm going to set the time, two hours, just so it starts running. There. All right. We're on the clock. I'm actually going to set a timer on my iPhone, or a stopwatch, actually, and start. So you see that? We're going. Now we wait. Okay, we're at about a minute and 20, still running. Okay, we're over four and a half minutes in. It hasn't tripped yet, and it is heating. 
that put a uh, second probe in there so it's not just the internal temperature probe just to monitor temp increase and it's going up heating element is heating and we still have power so far so good and we're five minutes in Let's monitor it and see if we can get it all the way up to 225 see what happens okay we're seven minutes 15 seconds in we're up to 126 degrees internal and climbing and hasn't tripped yet uh, when this problem started it wouldn't go more than a minute and a half two minutes before tripping the gfi breaker so maybe the heating element was the issue after all maybe it once it heated up uh, inside at a certain point it just shorted out something internal i don't know okay we're at about 13 and a half minutes 171 degrees uh, normally it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to come up to 225 to preheat it so we're right on track it's still got power nothing's tripped i think we are out of the woods here i think that that fix did it now it's hard to tell was it the well i guess it's not really that hard to tell is it the thermostat or is it the heating element more than likely it's the heating element uh, that would cause that to happen is it heating up the thermostat i can't imagine anything in that would cause a short that would trip the gfi possible i guess i'm not an electrician i mean i've i've worked on these things a number of times of my own uh, but the heating element does seem like the much more likely culprit um, and that's what a lot of people online that i've uh, whenever i was researching this seem to have had the same trouble so it looks like a heating element and uh, i'm glad that this seems to have worked still climbing in temperature still hasn't tripped the breaker all right we are past 15 minutes we still have power temp is still rising we're above 180 now right on track to hit what it normally would in a preheat uh, cycle so i'm going to call this one fixed and for the record this smoker was still in warranty still within a year and charbroil did provide all the parts free of charge i did have to pay a small shipping fee under five dollars um uh, eh, not 100 percent happy about that but they did provide every part that they thought i would need the cord the thermostat the heating element uh, should it have come with free shipping yeah i think so but i'm not going to ding them completely for that uh, they did uh, they did step up and cover it under warranty even though i didn't get a receipt because it was a gift uh, they were able to look it up by serial number and see that it was purchased uh, last august in uh, 2016 so just under the one year warranty on this but the the fix was fairly simple but as i stated several times in this video you're working with electricity here if you're not comfortable with that you don't have the skill set to do that, especially if you haven't done anything like this before. Don't don't do it. Get someone else to do it for you. It's very easy to find someone to repair these. And at the end of the day, if it's not repairable, it's much safer to replace it if you're not comfortable fixing it. 190 degrees, still going. Past 16 minutes, hasn't tripped. I think it works now. So thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.